Question 1. Of the following, which is the poorest method of securing a ladder? A. Securing the base of the ladder. B. Tying the ladder. C. Having someone foot the ladder. D. Using a ladder stability device. Right answer, C. Having someone foot the ladder. Question 2. Prior to moving a mobile tower scaffold, the platform height should reduce to a maximum of a. 2 meters. b. 3 meters. c. 4 meters. d. 5 meters. Right answer, c. 4 meters. Question 3. What do the letters SWL stand for? a. Safe working level. b. Satisfactory weight limit. C. Satisfactory working limit. D. Safe working load. Right answer. D. Safe working load. Question 4. Who should operate plant and equipment on site? A. Only people over 18 years of age. B. Trained and authorized employees only. C. An employee holding a full driving license. D. Any experienced employee. Right answer. B trained and authorized employees only. Question 5. What hazard is created when the head of a cold chisel mushrooms? A. Reduced strike splinters. D. Damage to the hammerhead. Right answer, C. Flying steel splinters. Question 5. Any damaged equipment must be A. Reported to your supervisor. B. Thrown away immediately use it. Right answer, A. Reported your supervisor. On, off switch. What action should you take? A. Try and fix the fault. B. Find another machine and carry on working. C. Stop work and inform your supervisor. D. Take the switch on to keep it running and carry on working. Right answer, C. Stop work and inform your supervisor. Question 7. The power hand tool you're about to use has burn marks visible on the cable. What should you do? A. Tape over the affected area and continue. B. Tell your supervisor about the defect and do not use the tool. C. Obtain another machine and carry on, but don't tell anyone. D. Carry on and get the job done. Right answer, B. Tell your supervisor about the defect and do not use the tool. Question 8. Your supervisor asks you to use a powered hand tool, which has a rotating blade. You notice that the guard is missing from the blade. What do you do? A. Use the tool anyway. You haven't had an accident with it before. B. Inform your supervisor that the tool is unsafe and that the guard must be replaced before it is used. C. Try to make an improvised guard yourself. D. Contact the manufacturer of the tool. Right answer, B. Inform your supervisor that the tool is unsafe and that the guard must be replaced before it is used. Question 9. Hand and power tools must be A. The best that you can buy. B. The made available when needed. C. In the company's colors. D. Suitable for the task and regularly inspected. Right answer, D. Suitable for the task and regularly inspected. Question 10. When should visual checks of portable handheld equipment be made by the user? A. When a replacement is needed. B. Monthly. C. Weekly. D. Each time it is used. Right answer, D. Each time it is used. Question 11. What precautions should you take before adjusting in electrical tool? A. Check the lead is not twisted or knotted. B. Wear safety footwear with steel toe caps. C. Disconnect from the power source. D. Wear the correct personal protective equipment. Right answer, C. Disconnect from the power source. Question 12. An electric drill is to be used. Before use, who should carry out a check on the tool? A. Storeman. B. Electrician. C. Foreman. 
D. User. Right answer, D. The user. Question 13. What action should you take if an electric drill cuts out while you are using it? A. Shake it about a bit. B. Put it back into the toolbox. C. Switch the power off and on. D. Remove it from use and tell your supervisor. Right answer, D. Remove it from use and tell your supervisor. Question 14. If an electric drill gives off blue smoke from the motor, you should A. Pour water over it. B. Use a CO2 extinguisher. C. Switch it off and report it. D. Stop work for 30 minutes. Right answer, C. Switch it off and report it. Question 15. How often should user visual checks be carried out on portable electrical equipment? A. Every time you use it. B. Every day. C. Once a week. D. At least once a year. Right answer, A. Every time you use it. Question 16. What is the preferred nominal voltage for portable hand lamps for general use on construction sites? A. 110 volts. B. 150 volts. C. 230 volts. D. 400 volts. Right answer, A. 110 volt. Question 17. What is the preferred nominal voltage for portable hand tools on construction sites? A. 12 volts. B. 24 volts. C. 110 volts. D. 230 volts. Right answer, C. 110 volt. Question 18. What is the preferred nominal voltage for local lighting up to 2 kilowatts on construction sites? A. 55 volts. B. 110 volts. C. 400 volts. D. 230 volts. Right answer, B. 110 volt. Question 19. What is the recommended maximum voltage for portable hand lamps when working in confined or damp locations? A. 50 volts. B. 110 volts. C. 230 volts. D. 400 volts. Right answer, A. 50 volts. Question 20. If you only have a mains voltage 230 volts hand drill and you want to use it on a construction site which only has yellow 110 volts socket outlets what should you do a use a transformer to boost the voltage b cut the plug off and fit a yellow one instead c obtain a 110 volts drill or a cordless one for the work D. Make up an extension cable with a yellow plug on one end and a standard socket on the other end. Right answer, C. Obtain a 110 volts drill or a cordless one for the work. Question 21. What is most commonly used to reduce 230 volts to 110 volts on site? A. Residual current device. B. Transformer. C. Circuit breaker. D. Step down generator. Right answer, B. A transformer. Question 22. When using an extension cable reel, which of the following statements is correct? A. Leave as much as possible coiled up on there. Reel. B. Uncoil it fully every time. C. Do not exceed the reeled or unreeled rating as appropriate. D. Only uncoil what you need. Right answer, C. Do not exceed the reeled or unreeled rating as appropriate. Question 23. If an extension cable is to be run across a site road, what action should you take? A. Throw wooden boards over it. B. Place a rubber protection ramp over it and put up a sign stating, ramp ahead. C. Don't do anything to protect the cable. D. Lay the cable over wooden boards. Right answer, B. 
Place a rubber protection ramp over it and put up a sign stating, Ramp ahead. Question 24. To operate a powered hand tool you must be A. 16 years old or over B. 18 years old or over C. 21 years old or over D. Trained and competent Right answer, D. Trained and competent Question 25. If you are about to use a power tool and discover the guard is missing, you should A. Make up a temporary guard yourself B. Use the tool but try to work quickly C. Not use the tool until a proper guard has been fitted D. Use the tool but work carefully and slowly Right answer, C. Not use the tool until a proper guard has been fitted Question 26. Why may a confined space be dangerous to work in? A. There may not be sufficient working space B. Air in the space may be unbreathable due to poisonous gas C. Temperature and poor ventilation may affect the worker D. All of the hazards mentioned Right answer, D. All of the hazards mentioned Question 27. What must be considered first when planning to carry out work in a confined space? A. Has the job been priced properly? B. Have the correct tools been arranged? C. Has sufficient manpower been allocated? D. Can the work be done from the outside? Right answer, D. Can the work be done from the outside? Question 28. When working in a confined space, such as a sewer, what danger may occur? A. Getting wet through. B. Boredom. C. Not enough time for the job to be done. D. Build up of harmful gases. Right answer, D. Build up of harmful gases. Question 29. To determine the safety of the atmosphere in an excavation, which of the following is essential? A. Sniffing the atmosphere after entry. B. Using a gas detector. C. Only entering for a short period to enable a quick escape. D. Looking for toxic gases. Right answer, B. Using a gas detector. Question 30. Before entering an excavation to start work, it must first be A. Inspected by a competent person. B. Covered over and left overnight. C. Filled with water then drained. D. Inspected by the HSE. Right answer, A. Inspected by a competent person. Question 31. What is the purpose of using a permit to work system? A. To ensure the job is carried out by the quickest method. B. To help ensure a safe system of work. C. To ensure that the client will pay for the work. D. To enable tools and equipment to be properly checked before the commencement of work. Right answer, B. To help ensure a safe system of work. Question 32. Why may young people be more at risk on site? A. There is no specific legislation applying to them. B. They are usually left to work alone to gain experience. C. There is no requirement to provide PPE to young people. D. They are inexperienced and may not recognize danger. Right answer, D. They are inexperienced and may not recognize danger. Question 33. You have to enter a manhole in which you know there are toxic gases. You have all the PPE but there does not appear to be a rescue plan in place. What should you do? A. Just get on and do the job, it will probably be all right. B. Plan to carry out the job in short bursts. C. Do not enter the manhole until a rescue plan and rescue equipment are in place. D. Ask your mate to stand by at the top of the manhole with a length of rope. Right answer, C. Do not enter the manhole until a rescue plan and rescue equipment are in place. Question 34. You have to enter a manhole in which you believe there could be toxic gases. You have not been 
provided with any respiratory protective equipment. RPE. What should you do? A. Tell your supervisor that you will need RPE. And if necessary, training in confined space. Working. B. Sniff the atmosphere in the manhole to see if you can smell harmful gases. C. Look into the manhole to see if you can see any harmful gases. D. Just get on with the job and accept the risks. Right answer. A. Tell your supervisor that you will need RPE. And if necessary, training in confined space. Working. Question 35. While digging a trench, you uncover a length of yellow marker tape at a depth of about 150 millimeters. What does the presence of the marker tape mean? A. The area has a high water table and precautions must be taken to prevent in in rush of water. B. There is a buried electrical cable and further excavation must be carried out with care. C. There is contaminated soil below the level of the marker tape and all excavation must stop. D. The excavation has reached a depth where the sides must now be supported. Right answer. B. There is a buried electrical cable and further excavation must be carried out with care. Question 36. A cable avoidance tool, CAT, and Evgeny generator can be used successfully to locate underground cables by whom? A. Anyone. B. A competent person after training. C. Any electricity company employee. D. The site foreman. Right answer. B. A competent person after training. Question 37. When exposing underground power cables, which method of excavation should you use? A. A 360-degree excavator with rubber tires. B. A pickaxe. C. Hand digging. D. A kango hammer. Right answer. C. Hand digging. Question 38. When do special precautions need to be taken when working near overhead electric power lines? A. Only if cranes etc. are being used. B. Only if someone could touch a line with their bare hands. C. Only if plant has to pass under the lines. D. Whenever work areas will be near or beneath the lines. Right answer. D. Whenever work areas will be near or beneath the lines. Question 39. When working alone. A. Make sure someone responsible knows where you are. B. You can do away with protective equipment. C. Don't bother anyone if you have a problem. Always sort it out yourself. D. Wear headphones, it will make the day go more quickly. Right answer. A. Make sure someone responsible knows where you are. Question 40. You have to walk across a site several times a day, but have to dodge a lot of site traffic. The first thing you should do is A. Have word with the drivers. B. Walk around the edges of the site to keep out of the way. C. Tell your supervisor about the danger. D. Jump on the back of a vehicle if you can, it's safer than walking. Right answer. C. Tell your supervisor about the danger. Question 41. A mobile plant operator can let you ride in their machine. A. If you have a long way to go. B. If it is raining. C. If it is designed to carry passengers. D. At any time. Right answer. C. If it is designed to carry passengers. Question 42. In accordance with the electricity at work. Regulations when considering whether to work live a responsible person should. A. Carry out a risk assessment. B. Only work dead. C. Only work live. D. Do as the client demands. Right answer. A. Carry out a risk assessment. Question 43. The normal procedure for working on electrical equipment should be which one of the following? A. Dead working. 
b. Wearing insulated gloves c. Using insulated tools d. Live working Right answer, a. Dead working Question 44 Test instruments used for working on electrical systems should a. Be yellow in color b. Be less than 10 years old c. Have non-insulated test probes d. Have insulated test probes Right answer, d. Have insulated test probes Question 45 Under the electricity at work regulations, live Working is considered a. As entirely acceptable b. To be normally permitted c. Only to be allowed in exceptional circumstances d. Never to be allowed Right answer, c. Only to be allowed in exceptional circumstances Question 46 Which of the following would you use to replace the fuse in a plug if fuses were not available? a. A nail b. A piece of silver paper c. A bit of wire d. None of the options listed Right answer, d. None of the options listed A blown fuse must only be replaced by a fuse of the correct type and rating Question 47 to prove a circuit or equipment is dead after isolation. What is the first activity in the sequence of events? A. Make sure equipment is not working. B. Check between line and earth. C. Check that the voltage detector is working on a proving device, known live source or in built test feature. D. Check between line and neutral. Right answer, C. Check that the voltage detector is working on a proving device, known live source or in built test feature. Question 48. The nominal single phase voltage in the UK is A. 230 volts B. 240 volts C. 415 volts D. 400 volts Right answer, A. 230 volts Question 49. When is live working permissible? A. When the person carrying out the work is a competent person. B. When it is unreasonable in all circumstances for the equipment to be made dead and suitable precautions are taken. C. When the means of isolation cannot be identified. D. When the person working on the equipment is wearing rubber gloves. Right answer, B. When it is unreasonable in all circumstances for the equipment to be made dead and suitable precautions are taken. Question 50. Which of the following is not a requirement of low voltage safe isolation practice? A. Ensuring that the correct point of isolation is identified. B. The person carrying out the work is issued with insulating gloves. C. A caution notice should be applied at their point of isolation. D. The conductors are proved to be dead at their point of work. Right answer, B. The person carrying out the work is issued with insulating gloves. Question 51. The specific effects on the human body of a major electric shock are one of the following. A. Dermatitis b. Burns and cardiac arrest c. Broken bones d. Chest pains Right answer, b. Burns and cardiac arrest Question 52. The lowest level of electrical current which can harm the human body is normally measured in a. Microamps b. Kiloamps c. Amps d. Milliamps Right answer, d. Milliamps Question 53. With regard to the effect of electrical current on the human body, one of the following is correct. A. A 6-amp circuit breaker should prevent a person receiving a fatal electric shock. B. A 3-amp fuse should prevent a person receiving a fatal electric shock. C. A 30 milliampere's residual current device RCD, should prevent a person receiving a fatal Electric shock. D. A 5 amp rewirable fuse should prevent a 
person receiving a fatal electric shock? Right answer, C. A 30 mA residual current device, RCD, should prevent a person receiving a fatal electric shock. Question 54. Where mains voltage is used to supply portable equipment on a construction site, what additional protection is required? A. Step-down transformer. B. Step-down generator. C. Cable avoidance tool. D. Residual current device, RCD. Right answer, D. Residual current device, RCD. Question 55. What color cable usually signifies 110 volt power? Supply on site. A. Black. B. Red. C. Blue. D. Yellow. Right answer, D. Yellow. Question 56. A portable electric generator on site has two power outlets, 110 volts and 230 volts. What color would the 110 volt outlet be? A. Black. B. Yellow. C. Red. D. Blue. Right answer, B. Yellow. Question 57. Where there is no local means of isolation for equipment or circuits to be worked on, which of the following is the preferred method of isolation? A. Isolation of the main switch or DB switch. Disconnector. B. Isolation of the individual circuit breaker or fuse. C. Pulling out the distributor's cutout fuse. D. Disconnecting the individual circuit from their DB. Right answer, A. Isolation of the main switch or DB switch. Disconnector. Question 58. What action should you take if a workmate gets an electric shock? A. Phone the electricity board immediately. B. Dial 999 and ask for the fire brigade. C. Cut off the power and call for help. D. Try to pull them to safety. Right answer, C. Cut off the power and call for help. Question 59. A residual current device is designed to operate in the event of one of the following. A. Overload. B. Earth fault. C. Lightning strike on the supply. D. Short circuit. Right answer, B. Earth fault. Question 60. Electrical installations on construction sites should be periodically inspected and tested. A. Every three months. B. Every year. C. Every six months. D. Every month. Right answer, A. Every three months. Question 61. The maximum AC voltage which the human body can withstand without long-term physiological effects in dry conditions is a 110 volts b 230 volts c 50 volts d 400 volts right answer c 50 volts question 62 which of the following statements is true with regard to the dangers of electricity a Electricity is perfectly safe so long as you wear cotton gloves. B. Electricity is only dangerous if you are not wearing Wellington boots. C. Electricity is only dangerous in wet weather. D. Electricity is dangerous at any time because you cannot tell by looking at a cable whether or not it is live. Right answer, D. Electricity is dangerous at any time because you cannot tell by looking at a cable whether or not it is live. Question 63. What is the most serious effect that electric shock can have if you come into contact with a live part? A. The electric current can cause a slight tingling in the fingers. B. The electric current can cause burn marks on the fingers. C. The electric current can cause the heart to stop, resulting in death. D. The electric current can cause the finger muscles to twitch. Right answer, C. The electric current can cause the heart to stop, resulting in death. Question 64. Your job involves you working near to hanging 
Electrical cables which have their ends. What should you do? A. Touch the cables to see if they're alive. B. Carry on working, as there shouldn't be a problem. C. Inform your supervisor and keep well away. D. Attempt to push the cables back into the ceiling void so that you can start work. Right answer, C. Inform your supervisor and keep well away. Question 65. For all live working activities it is necessary to A. Carry out a risk assessment as required by the AW regulations. B. Wear rubber gloves only. C. Be accompanied. D. Keep your fingers crossed. Right answer, A. Carry out a risk assessment as required by the AW regulations. Question 66. An electrical permit to work is primarily a statement that A. Someone else has taken responsibility for the work. B. The circuit or equipment is live. C. Certain instructions need to be followed. D. The circuit or equipment has been isolated and is safe to work on. Right answer, D. The circuit or equipment has been isolated and is safe to work on. Question 67. The probes of voltage detectors and test instruments used on electrical systems should be A. Manufactured in the UK B. Accompanied by a calibration certificate C. Shapes will have barriers to prevent finger contact with the tips D. Colored red Right answer, C. Shapes will have barriers to prevent finger contact with the tips Question 68. Which of the following does the electricity at work? EAW regulations apply to A. All persons engaged for work purposes B. Self-employed persons only C. Employees only D. Employers only Right answer, A. All persons engaged for work purposes Question 69. The electricity at work regulations require that A. Persons working with electricity must have the appropriate level of knowledge and experience. B. A. Training course is necessary before anyone can work with electricity. C. Only electricians can work with electricity. D. Anyone supervised can work with electricity. Right answer, A. Persons working with electricity must have the appropriate level of knowledge and experience. Question 70. The electricity at work regulations apply to A. Only low voltage systems. B. Only extra low voltage systems. C. All voltage systems. D. Only high voltage systems. Right answer, C. All voltage systems. Question 71. Which of the following should be used to prove a circuit or equipment is dead after isolation? A. A lamp holder with a length of flex attached. B. A proprietary test lamp or two-pole voltage detector. C. A voltage stick. D. A multimeter. Right answer, B. A proprietary test lamp or two-pole voltage detector. Question 72. Which of the following is not a suitable means of isolating a circuit? A. Removing a fuse and locking the distribution board. B. Putting insulating tape over the circuit breaker. C. Padlocking the isolating switch. D. Fitting a padlocked circuit breaker lockout. Right answer, B. Putting insulating tape over the circuit breaker. Question 73. Which of the following work procedures on electrical systems will always require a permit to work to be issued? A. Dead working on low voltage systems. B. Live working on low voltage systems. C. Dead working on high voltage systems. D. Live working on high voltage systems. Right answer, C. Dead working on high voltage systems. Question 74. Optical fiber cable remnants should not be left lying around on site because a they can be hot and burn upon contact b 
B. Laser beams still exist in the cut pieces. C. They can pierce the skin or eyes. D. They are toxic. Right answer, C. They can pierce the skin or eyes. Question 75. Why should the end of an optical fiber cable never be pointed towards your own or anyone else's eyes? A. The beam can transfer a strong electric current. B. The color of the beam is very hypnotic. C. The beam can bore a hole through the skin. D. The beam can damage the eyes. Right answer, D. The beam can damage the eyes. Question 76. The use of a multi-lock hasp with the appropriate number of padlocks is a recommended method of safe isolation where a individual circuit breaker locking off devices are not available b individual circuit breakers are not identified at the distribution board c more than one person will be working on circuits supplied from the same distribution board d you know the health and safety inspector is in the area right answer c more than one person will be working on circuits supplied from the same distribution board question 77 which of the following procedures should be used when more than one person will be working on circuits supplied from a distribution board which has been switched off a the use of a multi-lock hasp on the isolator with a padlock for each operative b blowing a horn before the power is switched on again C. Giving each operative a volt stick. D. Telling everyone what time the power will be switched on again. Right answer, A. The use of a multi-lock hasp on the isolator with a padlock for each operative. Question 78. You are on site and you need to dispose of some waste liquid that has oil in it and you are not sure what to do with it. What should you do? A. Dispose of it in a sealed container into the site. Skip. B. Pour it onto the ground, it will soak away. C. Take it outside and set light to it. D. Ask your supervisor about the correct way to deal with this waste. Right answer, D. Ask your supervisor about the correct way to deal with this waste. Question 79. How should you get rid of hazardous, special waste? A. Put it at the bottom of any site skip. B. In accordance with the correct site waste rules. C. Take it home, they won't want it on site. D. Take it to the nearest local authority waste tip. Right answer, B. In accordance with the correct site waste rules. Question 80. Which of the following is classed as hazardous, special waste? A non-asbestos insulation b polythene and shrink wrap c empty cement bags d fluorescent light tubes right answer d fluorescent light tubes fluorescent tubes are included because of their mercury content question 81 which of the following should be disposed of as hazardous special waste a timber plywood and mdf off cuts B. Glass fiber insulation. C. Aerosol sealant canisters. D. Use nuisance dust masks. Right answer, C. Aerosol sealant canisters. Question 82. You need to clean up some oil that has leaked from machinery onto the ground. What is the right way to do this? A. Put the oily contaminated soil into the general waste skip. B. Put the oily contaminated soil into a suitable container that takes hazardous waste. C. Put it under some off-cuts so that the oil cannot be seen. D. Wash the oil away with water and detergent. Right answer, B. Put the oily contaminated soil into a suitable container that takes hazardous waste. Question 83. Other site workers are complaining that you are generating too much dust what should you do a tell them you have nearly finished b stop work and inform your supervisor 
C. Ignore them, it's none of their business. D. Issue the other site workers with dust masks. Right answer, B. Stop work and inform your supervisor. Question 84. Who needs to understand relevant environmental risks on a construction site? A. Only the principal contractor. B. Only the subcontractors. C. Everyone working on the site. D. Only the environmental clerk of works. Right answer, C. Everyone working on the site. Question 85. Under environmental law, which statement is true? A. Companies and individuals can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. B. Companies can be prosecuted but not individuals. C. It is legal to transport business waste without proper paperwork. D. It is legal to disturb protected species habitats. Right answer, A. Companies and individuals can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. Question 86. Do individuals have any responsibility for sustainability when on site? A. No, it is dealt with by the site manager. B. No, it is a matter for the environment. Agency, NIEA, SAPA. C. Only on sites where there is asbestos. D. Yes, on every site. Right answer, D. Yes, on every site. Question 87. Which of the following is not best practice from a sustainability point of view? A. Saving materials, fuel, water and energy. B. Looking after the people working on or near the site. C. Protecting the environment. D. Sending unused and waste copper cables to landfill. Right answer, D. Sending unused and waste copper cables to landfill. Question 88. Which of the following does not help sustainability during construction projects? A. Leaving engines and motors running when they're not needed. B. Segregating waste. C. Vehicle sharing or using public transport to get to work. D. Avoiding overheating site huts. Right answer, A. Leaving engines and motors running when they're not needed. Question 89. Which of the following should you do on site in the interest of sustainability? A. Run plant and equipment when they are not needed. B. Bury waste material. C. Comply with site instructions on handling waste materials. D. Pour waste liquids down a drain off site. Right answer, C. Comply with site instructions on handling waste materials. Question 90. Which of the following is not part of environmentally friendly construction? A. Creating a dust nuisance to residents in neighboring properties. B. Preventing water and soil pollution. C. Saving energy. D. Minimizing the amount of waste you create during a job. Right answer, A. Creating a dust nuisance to residents in neighboring properties. Question 90. From an environmental point of view, why should materials be reused where possible? A. To save the client money. B. A lot of energy and raw materials go into making most construction products. C. It makes less mess on site. D. It's a European Union law. Right answer, B. A lot of energy and raw materials go into making most construction products. Question 91. Which action will help to minimize waste? A. Only take or open what you need and return. Or reseal anything left over. B. Use new materials packs at the beginning of each day. C. Leave materials unprotected in the rain. D. Always order much more than usually required, just in case you need it. Right answer, A. Only take or open what you need and return. Or reseal anything left over. Question 92. Which of the following is good environmental practice? A. Overordering materials. 
b. Segregating waste into different types. c. Leaving skips uncovered in wet weather. d. Leaving motors running when they are not needed. Right answer, b. Segregating waste into different types. Question 93. Do individuals have any responsibility for minimizing the amount of waste created on site? a. Only if asbestos removal is being carried out. b. Yes, everyone on site has this responsibility. c. No, it's the responsibility of the client. d. Only during site cleanup, at the end of the project. Right answer, b. Yes, everyone on site has this responsibility. Question 94. If you have unused material left, what should you do? Before you consider putting non-hazardous waste items into a skip. A. Make sure there is a label on it. B. Put it in a plastic bag and put it in a skip. C. Check whether someone else on your team can make use of it. D. Weigh it. Right answer, C. Check whether someone else on your team can make use of it. Question 95. Why should different types of waste be separated on site? A. They will take up less room in the skip. B. So, the local council can charge landfill tax. C. So the main contractor can check what's being thrown away. D. So waste can be recovered more easily. Right answer, D. So waste can be recovered more easily. Question 96. When storing liquids, such as oils, fuels or chemicals, on site, what must you do? A. Always use the nearest container. B. Use a transparent container so you can check how much liquid is in it. C. Ensure the liquid material is stored safely and securely, and out of the way of site traffic. D. Keep the tops off to prevent pressure from building up. Right answer, C. Ensure the liquid material is stored safely and securely, and out of the way of site traffic. Question 97. What can help to prevent harm to the environment from oil spillages? A. A supply of water to flush the spill away. B. Cover the spillage with soil. C. Turning liquid containers upside down so the top can't come off. D. Store oils in an area that can catch any spills, such as a bund or a drip tray. Right answer, D. Store oils in an area that can catch any spills, such as a bund or a drip tray. Question 98. What should you do immediately if you get a small cut on a finger whilst at work? A. Carry on working. B. Get first aid. C. Ask your employer to report it to the HSE. D. Just wash it clean. Right answer, B. Get first aid. Question 99. In an emergency situation at work you should do. What? A. Phone the HSE inspectorate. B. Obey the site emergency procedure. C. Ensure your workmates are all accounted for. D. Leave the site immediately. Right answer, B. Obey the site emergency procedure. Question 100. What does the sound of a siren on site normally indicate? A. A fire. B. A toxic escape. C. An explosion. D. An emergency. Right answer, D. An emergency.